So hi, I'm Daniel. And uh, <clears throat> well, sorry, I want to start this. No, but I, I'm Brazilian. I speak Portuguese, but I also understand Spanish. I like it. So yeah, I'm Daniel. I am a principal software engineer in the real time team. And yes, uh, runtime verification is not my main area, <clears throat> but I end up joining in this area as a side effect of my PhD. I'm doing a PhD, a joint degree with uh, Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina in Brazil. I'm Brazilian, and the uh, Scuola Superiore Santana, because I'm also Italian, so I like to have this combination. And uh, I work at Red Hat. So before starting, uh, the main goal of my PhD was to create a split model of how the parameter T kernel works in, the, in terms of synchronization. And this model should be deterministic to try to, to end up proving that the real-time Linux is deterministic in some, some parts, right? <clears throat> and while creating this model, I have to verify the model, and I compare the Linux execution against the model. And uh, initially, I found a lot of problems on my model, and that was expected, right? But during the development, I ended up finding problems in the Linux kernel. And that's how I joined in the runtime verification scenario, let's say. And uh, I, will talk, I, will, I will talk more about this now. Yeah. So Linux is being used on safe critical on real-time systems. <clears throat> from more cases at Red Hat, we use Red Hat Enterprise Linux for real-time in high-frequency trading. But there are people saying that they would like to use the Linux on self-driven cars. And uh, this seems to be a nice argument. And we better be prepared, right? I don't want to be, to be in the front of a car running by Linux during a crash. So previously work, which is the model that I did for the parameter T, has shown to be practical for Linux developers. Because while presenting my model, trying to to convince people that it was good for, for real time. Many people say that would be even better for runtime verification, and that's how I started this work. So Linux, the point is that Linux are already informally analyzed as a discrete event system by practitioners because, real, uh, because operating system developers already see the system as a set of state machines. That's natural. That's on the first page of a book, states of a task, like running, stop, and uh, dispatch it. So <clears throat> uh, state machines are a formal language that looks natural for us. And uh, however, Linux lacks a methodology for runtime verification that can be applied throughout all the in-kernel subsystems and efficiently. And during the conference, like the Linux Plumbers and other conference, kernel developers say that they would like to, to explore such possibility. So I will present an efficient automata-based uh, runtime verification method for the Linux kernel, which uh, I will also present how we self-generate code from the model to, to the Linux kernel. And uh, by taking advance, uh, advantage of the in-kernel trace infrastructure, we, I will show how to dynamically load such a model in the kernel and how to verify it. <clears throat> and finally, I will present a performance evaluation of the methodology. So some background. OK, Linux has a very advanced set of tracing methods. We have a like, function tracer that can trace almost all the functions. And we have a trace points. And we can do dynamically create trace points during runtime. <clears throat> and here we have a, an output of trace. So, and uh, one good thing about the tracing is that it's not hard coded on the binary. It initially, it's uh, no operations, so we can have it <clears throat> have almost no overhead while running the kernel, and having the option of enabling it. When we enable trace, <clears throat> when we enable trace, we actually translate the no operations into calls to the functions that we want to run while tracing. <clears throat> It's uh, OK, it was initially written to call tracers, but we can hook any function to that. And uh, this has been used very creatively for, for live patching. And uh, here I'm using for verification. So automata is a, is a method in which we can model discrete event systems that are system driven by events, obviously, that uh, occurs uh, during the time. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and it has its formal definition that includes a set of states, a set of events, a set of uh, transition, uh, the functions that translate from, okay, I'm in this state, I have received this event, I go to the next state. I have on one initial state and a set of, uh, of final states. <clears throat> okay, this doesn't look natural, right? But the automata has uh, a graphical format that is easier to understand, right? And here we have, a, like, this is the initial state, these are the final states, and these are the allowed transitions. So it's easier to express uh, our knowledge like this. So related work. There are some, uh, <coughs> there are some initiatives of applying more formal methods to the Linux kernel. Even from the Linux kernel community, we have some somehow informal, but still the lock depth that tries to create the models of locking and try to find the deadlocks or deadlocks in the kernel. We have one real formal model, which is the memory consistency model. <coughs> and uh, people from ARM were, are using TLA plus, for example, and they successfully applied to try to prove the properties of spin locks, and they ended up finding bugs on spin locks. So these are examples from real kernel community, right? And uh, there are people using Automata on Linux. There are one paper from 2009 in which people try to use LTTNG, which is a tracing tool, to, uh, with Automata to try to compare the execution. <coughs> there are some tools that they, people from Italy that are trying to learn how the system should behave with trace, but for other purpose, not on, for state-aware robustness testing, not for runtime verification. And here is the model I created during my PhD, which is the parameter team model. And uh, it aims to formally describe the dynamics of the real-time Linux. Here is one publication, but I have uh, another one, a new, this is the conference, I have a journal paper now. And just for example, on the on this parameter T model, using the the modular approach, I was able to to create a model for the for Linux, which has nine thousand states and twenty three thousand transitions. But I'm using a methodology breaking these down into very small pieces. And uh, <clears throat> okay, and during the development, I ended up finding four bugs in the kernel, and three of them could not be detected by any other two, right? So yeah, while presenting the model, the current community say that they would uh, like to see more about this because Automata seems to be a good abstraction and because of tracing. <coughs> but while doing this, I was tracing the kernel with perf, exporting the data to user space, and uh, running the Automata in user space. The problem is that I was doing the verification of very fine-grained lock mechanism, synchronization mechanism. That generated like 2,000 gigs of data in 30 seconds per CPU. So uh, a very large amount of the CPU time was being used actually to collect trace data and then export it into user space. And so it was good to show that my model worked and to explore it, but <coughs> it was not that practical, right? And, uh, and also, I could not take uh, actions when something wrong happened while seeing this state, wrong state inside the kernel. So <clears throat> and that's the motivation for the efficient uh, verification. So here is the proposed approach. We have uh, models created in, uh, in, uh, in the dot format, automata models. We generate code and run it. I will do a step-by-step -step explanation of how things work now. So, first thing is that it's okay to think on having a small automata translating it into C code by hand, but that's not practical while you're having like uh, 9,000 states, right? I would lose a lot of time writing this code. So, uh, but as it's a formal specification, we can translate this into code as well. So we developed a, a Python script that translates the automata into C code. So here is one example. Uh, <clears throat> on, the, on the kernel, we only accept uh, scheduling-related functions, like waking up a task, with preemption disabled in the RT kernel, right? Because we don't want to have concurrence with the scheduler. 
This is a small, small automata, and then I translate it uh, into code and have this output. I have the set of states, I have the set of events, and then use the index of these enums to fulfill the structure of the automata, right? Huh? Here, I have a vector of state names, I have a matrix of, uh, of uh, the function that uh, gives me from one state and one event, which is my next uh, state, and uh, the automata definition, basically. And then I fulfill with the data, right? In the preemptive state, which is the initial, if I receive the preemptive disable, I go to the non preemptive. So I use this matrix as index. And from that code, the basic definition of the automata, I need to link the automata definition with the kernel code. So uh, <clears throat> here is some piece of code that I have to read uh, once, but can be reused. And so while you're running the kernel, I receive one event from the tracing infrastructure, and that's the actions that I take, right? I get the current state, I get the next state, and if the next state is valid, I go to the next state, right? I go for next states and, and that's it. If not, I generate an error and say, okay, this state, this uh, transaction was not expected in this state, and I can generate an error. So here are the implementation of each of these functions. So to get, to go to the next state to figure out only 10 minutes more. Oh no, it passed 10 minutes. Sir, <laughs> it's the last talk. <laughs> I always overrun. So to go to the next state, I have just a matrix lookup. To get the current state, I have uh, one, I just look at a variable. To set the next state, I just set a variable. And also to get the bug information, I just do vector lookups. This means that all the operations are O of one, and uh, I use just one variable to keep the state. So this should be very efficient, because it doesn't matter the amount, it doesn't matter the size of my automata. It can be my very huge automata. I will not. Uh, the number of states will not change the, <coughs> the, the efficiency of the verification, and I also will not change the how much data I need to store. And, that, and that's a good properties. So, and then, after having the code, I, I link it, uh, I load the model, and while you're running, I just run, I don't print anything, and if I found a, um, a problem, a property that's not followed, I printed the debug to the trace. So, okay, repeating. And here's one example of an error. Like, I was in the non preemptive state and received the preempt enable event and, and came to the preemptive state back. And here it's safe because it's the final state. Then uh, the schedule waking was received here and it's not allowed in the model. And so I'd say it was not expected. And here is the stack trace. It turns out that. I always forgot to open the link. It turns out that this was a problem in the <coughs> this was a problem in in the kernel in which I was missing the trace ev the the trace information to go into the um, to the trace buffer and it was a problem in the trace buffer and I could catch with the tooling that I also used the trace infrastructure. And this bug was reported, and it still is not fixed because it's, uh, you know, sometimes things take a long time to be fixed in the kernel. And, uh, okay, nice, so this seems to be a good approach, right? Let's do a real performance evaluation because when we are applying formal methods, usually we have a pain on the eval in the performance. So I did two benchmarks. One was analyzing <clears throat> the system on the throughput, seeing how my, my approach uh, impacts on the throughput, and also in the latency, which is uh, the metric that we use in the real-time kernel. And as a base of comparison, I first did the benchmarks using the system without any tracing, nothing the system as it is. 
and then uh, doing the, the tracing the same events while you're using F trace, but not doing the verification, just tracing, saving the data to the trace buffer, <coughs> and uh, and did the benchmarks using the the approach presented here. I'm using this small automata, but the problem is that it doesn't matter the number of states. What matters is the frequency of the events, and these events are very frequent inside the kernel, the real-time kernel, right? So, <coughs> benchmark throughput with a lower kernel activation, mostly running in user space. Here is the kernel as it is, here is the kernel doing trace, and here is the kernel doing the verification, right? We have a very low impact, Sometimes the impact is in the error margin because it says that verifying is faster than the, the kernel. It doesn't make sense, but it's because in the error margin. And uh, it's very low impact when working in user space. But when we go to user space, we have some impact, right? That, that's expected. So here is the tracing, here is the system running without trace, and here is the, the system tracing, right? And we can see that, consistently see that doing the verification we put less impact on the system performance than only tracing it, because tracing requires more, more operations than just the operations there that I show in the automata, and it also requires more uh, memory to being copied from one state, from one place to another. So <clears throat> in the end, doing the verification is even more efficient than tracing for a later uh, later verification user space, for example. Uh, and here is the benchmark using the cyclic test. The cyclic test is a tool that sets a timer in the future, goes to sleep, wakes up. When it wakes up, it looks at the clock and see the delay between the expected uh, uh, wake-up time and the actual wake-up uh, wake time, telling the latency in the real-time kernel. And here is the as is, which is very low, it's nice. So here is the, there were a lot of activation here and the worst case was in 18 microseconds. Here is with the trace, we have a different line in a longer uh, worst case latency. And here is the approach of using automata. So it's even closer, it's closer than tracing, but it, it, it also doesn't change too much the, the line of the, of the latency, which is also a good property, given by the fact that our operations are O of one and that I don't use much space in memory. Okay, <clears throat> what, what it means? Uh, it means that, as I'm not trying to say that tracing is bad. No, tracing is awesome. We all love tracing. But it means that as trace is enabled in production system, we can also run the run, the runtime and monitor of the system as the system is running, right? And uh, we can run the verification even in production, which is good if you try to monitor one case that you don't see very often, but you would like to catch some information from the kernel while debugging. This is very useful, for example, at Red Hat support. I worked for three years there, and the more tools we have, uh, the better life is. And uh, Okay, yeah, it's used for debugging problems. So future work, uh, I have to integrate my big model with this methodology. That's that's the the critical path now. I did a st I did a pause on this work because I returned doing the real time part of my research, but I will return later. Create a better interface. I'm talking to Stephen and to Arnaldo to create an interface to integrate this kind of verification. I'm also working with uh, <coughs> Joel Fernandez from Google. We are doing like a cross mentoring and I'm mentoring here in, in the, the formal method side and he's mentoring me on RCU. Let me try to create a model for the RCU. But from that work, the, the big thing or the better, the best result I saw so far is that People from the runtime verification community are reaching me so we can do even more work. And uh, I'm, I'm working with the information security department of uh, information, information security group in the computer science department at ETH Zurich for the integration of other formal methods to the, for runtime verification with Linux. 
mainly involving temporal logic. We are very near to, the, to a paper. Actually, we are missing a deadline today. <laughs> there is always the next conference. <laughs> and um, when, I, when I sent these slides, I could not say yet, but people from Oxford got inspired from this work and the models to try to explore the ability of creating automatically, automatically generate models using AI and all this cool stuff. And uh, they recently released the paper inspired by this work, which is, uh, I mean, it's, for me, it's even better than my paper. The, the idea of having work inspired by mine is even better than making a paper. And that's the intention I see from Red Hat perspective, like motivation, motivating more and more research applied to Linux. And uh, today, people from the uh, University of uh, Turin uh, reached me to talk about using time at automata. So I think that that's the main result of this research, which is people get interested in applying uh, runtime verification methods to the Linux kernel. And if you have an idea and would like to talk, uh, I, I have to say that I am a real-time uh, developer with interest in learning more formal methods. But I know how things work in the kernel, and I can help to integrate it more theoretical results inside the kernel, and then I'll be happy to, col help to collaborate. And the more people I find wishing to collaborate on these, the easier it will be to convince my manager, my manager's manager, and my manager's manager's manager to continue the research. So please reach me out. <laughs> and, uh, okay, this is the paper that explains these in details. I have everything up in the, on my personal site. There is a link in the paper. You can find out the code and experiments and how to replicate it. Feel free to go there. And this is the journal paper of the model, <coughs> which explains how I created this big model. And it was accepted last week. And now I can finish my PhD. And uh, this is the conference paper of this model. So that's it. This work was made in collaboration with uh, the Scuola Superiore Sant'Anna and the Automation and System Department at the Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, questions at the back? Question from, I'm seeing a very hard question. <laughs> so is the, the kind of graph which you mentioned there is dot-like, et cetera, the only type of input you try to use? So for, for formal methods, so one of my theses, I actually did verification using graph programs, so, but I used pet Petri nets, basically. Right. So if you use the Petri net representation for this, which you could do, so the activations and so on. I tried. You have all kinds of uh, formal methods available for things like that uh, verification and so on. So have you tried that? No, that's, that's a good point, right? And it goes before this work. When I was trying to create the parameter team model, I did nine months of uh, formal methods classes. And, uh, and in, in the, it turned out that there was two, op two possibilities, Petri nets and automata. I tried pet Petri nets, but it was easier to me to express with automata. And that's the main reason, yeah, right? The formal methods of Petri nets, they're, yeah. they're quite powerful there, so you're leaving them on the table. Yeah, and that's why I'm trying to inspire other people to do research, <laughs> because <laughs> Yes, I agree. There are a lot of opportunities with Petri nets. I agree with that uh, is a good methodology. In the past, I took the decision to go to Automata because it was easier to me, and I had to finish the PhD, and so taking easier paths is something good. Back. Sorry? Uh, you can actually translate them back. So you can try to, with some help, perhaps, there are a couple of... Uh, border cases, but you can have an arbitrary uh, graph where you have identified external inputs and so on uh, into a Petri net, and then use the same thing, the same mechanism, so you don't have to then go from the graph representation, or at least for all the verification from the graph representation and do it all there, so they, they can be swapped over, yeah. especially if you have some limitations on the form of the graph. I agree, I agree, and, uh, and, that, and that's... And that was another reason for me to write, try to explore more formal methods, because I knew that once we have one kind of representation, we could try to translate to another representation. I completely agree with you. We just need more people to try to these things. And I think that... 
Yeah. That's why I was asking you about people in the <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions? So, in fact, uh, me, I wanted to ask uh, how you obtained the model. Uh, in fact, you did it manually, right? Yes. Uh, and I wanted to suggest that there are many methods for learning automata, <laughs> but uh, it seems like uh, somebody is already working on that, but yeah. there are really many uh, approaches yeah, to yeah, automatically yeah. learning automata and even networks of automata. So you, the may, you may learn one automaton or a network of automata. Do you have students? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm, yes, we have some students and some of them are working on automata. And nice. Have, yeah, yeah that, that's I, something I've, yeah. I've seen that there is a lot of work with Automata here in, yes. in Bruno. And if there's anybody that would like to collaborate on these, I'm open. Because yes, I, we should discuss that. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> okay. Am I open to discussions, manager? No, he uh, didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah. Uh, I think we can take this. Yeah, no, no, but yeah, okay, sure. But it's great. It's, it's uh, a, you see, I'm a very easygoing <coughs> person. Other questions? If no, let's thank the speaker once more. Thank you very much, Daniel.